Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet with Sonnet's Garden Blooms. I wanna thank you all for stopping by. Now in today's video, we are going to do all things DIY snowmen. Yes, you heard me right. We are gonna talk snowmen. Uh, seems a bit early, but honestly, in Wisconsin here, we saw our first snowflake. And when I saw that, I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to start dabbling in creating a snowman. So I cannot wait to hear what you guys all think. This is the first time that I've ever hand drawn little snowman faces. I figure the more I play around and dabble with it, the better I'm gonna get. So I can't wait to hear what you guys all think of the video. For project one, a while ago I thrifted this old crate from the Goodwill bins. I absolutely loved it. I love the corners and initially I was going to paint this and then I decided I liked it just the way it was. So I broke out these uh, old fencing pieces. Another vendor at the Yield Goat was kind enough to give me these. I had a few left in my stash. I pulled them out and now we are going to try to recreate somewhat of that other crate. In the end, it really did not look like that other crate at all because the boards, the width of the boards were totally different than the crate. And it was what I had to work with. So I got creative. We did not add a handle. The crate got too tall without the handle. And I felt like by adding a handle, it just would not look right. Uh, so really it looks kind of like just like a vintage uh, milk crate kind of or something like that. I cut the ends to 12 inches and then the side walls to 15. I did take the side walls and nail them to, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the side walls to the end walls. That way when it came time to putting the bottom on, I didn't have to rip any additional boards down. So what I did is I created two layers just like this and nailed them together and then I stacked the two layers and then Brad nailed those together. And it looks, I think, pretty awesome at this point. I actually could have been happy with the crate as is, but I did have a vision. I was going to be making a snowman, guys. And that really is why I made two layers uh, instead of just the one layer because I wanted to make sure I had enough side on the side walls, enough space to actually put a big nose, uh, draw his face on, and otherwise too, I think that this would have been cute as is uh, with just one layer of boards. So here is the project to this point. We have the two layers, we have the bottom on. I'm loving it, but now we're gonna try to make this look like a snowman. So I want to paint the entire piece white. And actually I had some white paint left over from my barn quilts. And when I was painting the bases for that for Cranberry Fest, so I broke that out. And basically the look that I'm going for. I don't want it to be completely solid. I want some of the grain to come through. I want it to look a little aged and worn. So I'm almost like dry brushing this on. I don't want a lot of paint on my brush and I just uh, rub it back and forth just to get some coverage so that when I draw his face on or paint his face on that it's going to pop um, but not complete coverage. So I paint all four sides. I did not paint the inside. I kind of liked how that weathered old look uh, popped against the white and I figured there was really no reason to paint the inside. If anything, I'm going to just put greens in here like faux greens uh, and not any dirt or anything like that. So more or less just decorate it up. All right, this is where it's at at this point. I have all four uh, sides painted. I did paint right around the edge of the top and I love how this looks. So now we are going to add a nose. 
and I had a bunch of wood lying around and I decided to kind of just draw out a nose, use my jigsaw and cut it out uh, just very random and uh, we'll see how this turns out. So here is the finished nose. I think it looks kind of cute and now it just needs a bit of color. So I have this orange in my stash. It was an orange that I've had for a while uh, from when I first started painting barn quilts. I'm trying to use up all my paints uh, that I have in my stash. So I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to paint this nose orange. I'm going to let it dry and then we're going to attach it with the brad nailer. Once we attach it, then we're going to go ahead and attempt to paint on the rest of the snowman's face. So here I have attached the nose to the crate. I wanted it to be right in the center of it. Uh, so just eye it up, centerize that nose. And I started off with the mouth and I started with very tiny dots uh, just to place them and try to figure out where I wanted them. Then I started getting a little bit more daring and making them a little bit larger. Uh, I did the same exact thing with the eyes and then with the eyes I determined that I probably should add just a touch of white as well just to really make those eyes pop. But overall, I think this is extremely cute. I love it. And like I said, this was my very first attempt to hand draw any type of snowman. So I think the more I practice, the better I will definitely get. And as you watch the rest of the projects, I painted quite a few snowman faces. Now for project two, I have heard from quite a few viewers, they wanted to see some type of ornament project. And because today's video is all about snowman, because it snowed here in Wisconsin, I decided to make a snowman ornament. This is just a scrap piece of wood. I, I seriously keep every piece of wood, folks. And I am painting it with that same white paint. I'm painting the front, the sides, and the back with that paint and letting it dry very well. And then we're going to go to town and create a little snowman. So this, that little chunk of wood right there, that is the orange nose. That actually, <laughs> when I was cutting a board, flew off and was laying on the ground and I was trying to jigsaw something with it for the nose and I happened to look down and I'm like that is the perfect nose for this ornament. I picked it off the ground. I painted the same orange that I did on the last uh, carrot nose. I am just using a real uh, fine tip uh, paintbrush just some black acrylic paint and I'm going in and creating the mouth and then the eyes. Now initially I was just going to leave them black and afterwards I was thinking gosh it really needs something. So I ended up adding just a little dab of white in the nose or in each of the eyes and I think eventually um, for these, what I would recommend 
is actually taking a little mini drill bit, drilling a hole in the top, and then adding a little tiny eye hook to run your string through. And then on top, just adding just a cute little piece of uh, ribbon around that little eye hook. I think it will just add a lot more to that. What I did do is I just stapled uh, the twine to the back and I'm not liking that as much. For project three, if you guys have been following me for a while, you'll know I have quite a few fence boards to use. Now I cut this down and we are going to use that same white paint that I wanna get rid of. And I am gonna, again, just dry brush that white paint on this board. I am gonna do the all four sides. Uh, I'm gonna leave the back natural. Typically I do like to finish it off off, but these fence boards I just like that aged look on the back and I'm just gonna like I said dry brush it on the front let it dry very thoroughly and then we're gonna go ahead and we are gonna stamp a really fun saying um, for in honor of the snowman theme so I'm breaking out my favorite set of stamps, which is called typesetting. I'm going to lay out the stamps and we are stamping feeling frosty uh, in honor of Frosty the Snowman. So I laid out Frosty first and picked it up with uh, the backing. I'm going to ink it up with the IOD permanent ink uh, place it down uh, and just the key here is have everything lined up. Um, I basically just flip it over so I really know exactly where I'm going to flip it back um, but then I'm going to ink it up and when I place it I want to make sure I don't move my stamps. I don't want any smearing. Just place it, hold it with one hand, take your other hand, and rub over each of the stamps. That way you're getting a very good image. Um, like you're getting the, a really nice crisp image for each of the stamps. Now, when I pulled it off, one thing I did notice is that the F and the R they some of it because the board is old and aged there's some um, imperfections it's not a completely flat i then put it back on i lined everything up put it back on and then i really took my finger in those areas and rubbed very thoroughly over the F, the R, and the O and just really got um, that image on there better after that, I started working on uh, the feeling and just lined everything up again. And I started off um, because there are two E's needed. I do half of the word and ink that up and stamp that. Then I just re-stamp the F and the E, line that up, and then we got feeling frosty. I did want a little um, mark by the N uh, because I do not have the G. I just have feeling. And I took um, the number one and I just inked up the top part of the one and just stamped it. And I think it looks pretty good.
For our fourth and final project, how many of you guys have a bunch of scrap lumber just lying around? Well, I can tell you I do. I keep every piece. And my vision here was I was going to cut these to four different lengths. So I cut one to 10, one to 11, one 12, and then one 13. And I'm going to basically layer them a little bit. And it is going to say on the bottom, snow. I'm going to uh, paint the tops black for the hats, the bottoms white. And I broke out one of the stamp, um, the letters, and I kind of had an idea of where I wanted to place the letters. And I'm taking my blue tape, I'm taping off the top, and we're going to paint uh, the actual tops black. We're going to let that dry, we're going to remove the tape, put the tape, um, replace it, and then paint the bottoms white. So here the top black pieces are completely dry. I'm using that same white paint and we are going to just apply one even coat to all four sides and the back of that. And we're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna assemble the snowman. So I used my brad nailer to hold all four snowmen together. I'm breaking out the typesetting set of stamps from IOD and I'm laying out snow. Now all the products uh, like the inks and the IOD stamps can be found on my website at www.sonnetsgardenblooms.com. So, um, but going forward here, I'm laying out snow. I'm just taking a tiny bit of that uh, backing and I'm going to pick up each letter. We're going to stamp each one. And once that is done, then we're going to draw on or paint on, I should say, hand paint on a snowman face to each one of these. So we're starting with the S, we're going to ink that up, line it up, and we are going to do that for each of the letters. I am using the IOD permanent ink. Once it dries, it is permanently on there. There's no need to clear coat it or anything like that. After I stamp each one, I do recommend that you wipe it. Uh, I just use a wet rag and wipe each of the letters off. That way, the next time you need to use the stamps, they are nice and clean. Like I said, I go through and I do that to each one of these letters. I just want to make sure that they're all like it all the way straight across that it lines up. Now the N was a little tricky because my backing was a little bit wider. I just cut off a little chunk of it and then I was able to get into that little space and uh, stamp the N. Now that snow is officially stamped, I'm taking that same orange paint and I am just going to randomly hand draw each of these snowman noses. and. I, like I said, I have never done this before, so I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? I want each of the noses going different directions, um, and I just start, and I try to envision, like, what my little snowman nose should look like, uh, and they start off smaller initially, and then they grew a little bit. Um, I kept adding to them just to try to get them to size of the actual snowman themselves. Now we're gonna add the eyes, and I'm just using that same paintbrush. I'm going to add two little circles to each one of these snowmen, and in the end, I did end up going um, off camera, and I added a mouth as well. I just felt like there was some extra space in there, and that they would be super cute with a little bit of a smile, and I think it really finished their faces off. And now looking at this as I was editing and after I did like a final clip of these little snowmen, I really think their hats needed something. So what I've decided to do is I am going to go back and I am going to use the new IOD molds 
the snowflake molds and I'm going to add some snowflakes to the snowman and I think that will be the perfect touch to these little guys and it will really finish them off because you can't really put a scarf on them but then I'm like gosh those little hats look so plain and I think that's going to be that final touch. Lastly, I'm going in with just a little bit of white and adding a little tiny dot of white to each of the eyes. And like I said earlier, this is the first time that I've ever hand painted any type of snowman. So I am learning as I go. And I just think that that these little details just really changed the look of them. So what did you guys all think? I hope you were inspired to try to paint your own snowman. They are absolutely so fun and you can create the most unique snowman faces. So uh, Monday's video, I am going to go picking tomorrow morning at a fellow viewer's garage. I'm going to tape that so if everything goes perfectly, that will be Monday's video. Otherwise, we are going to start flipping some items and get that out for you. Now, um, this weekend, I plan on continuing my garage organization. Uh, I am going to be taping some clips for you just because so many of you have asked to see what I'm doing. And I'm going to just show you some little bits and pieces. So that might be in a future video as well. Uh, definitely, once it gets officially completely organized, I will show you. But if you could see it now, oh my word, it is not pretty. So you guys have a wonderful weekend. Um, but one more thing, I will be going live tonight over on my Facebook page. So go ahead, join me at 6 o'clock tonight. Um, otherwise, if you don't uh, watch this before then, watch the replay. We're going to be crafting. Um, because I had some problems on Monday night, we are going to do a Friday Night Live. So uh, that will be a lot of fun. Also, my membership group is still open. It will officially be open until October 28th. Then it will close and it will not be open again for six months. So there have been quite a few of you that have already signed up and I am looking forward to having more of you join our great membership group. Um, I will have all the details available in the description. Otherwise, you can email me and I'll give you a whole lot more info at sonnetsgardenblooms.com and I'll shoot you over all the nitty gritty details about the membership group. All right, well, you guys have yourself a great weekend and we will see you Monday. Bye.